All right, we have the community questions for Admiral Trench. Um, the last one we looked at, Zori Bliss, was a complete waste of time. Those questions, half of them were trolling questions. Some of them weren't even proper sentences. It was just words smashed together that CG put an answer to. And then some of the questions CG didn't even bother to answer. They just gave you like a stupid, pointless response. So hopefully... This one isn't as much of a waste of time. One thing that I can say is there is a lot more questions here. So hopefully, even if there is some that are crap, there's some that are actually good mixed in there as well. So, let's get it. Number one. Will Trench be a 330 shard unlock or will he be a 145 shard unlock? He will require 100... Oh, wait, wow. He will require 330 and unlock at 7 stars as previous conquest characters have. First off, that's given. 330 is a 7 star. You didn't have to say that twice. And second, um, yes, you do have a good point, actually. I think all Conquest characters have unlocked the 7 stars, except for the ships. The ships are 145s, but ships are also way more of a pain in the dick to unlock, so it makes sense that they make it a little easier. Will Trench lead cause extortion to spread to other enemies like Newt's lead does? No, Trench's lead does not cause extortion to spread the way Newt Gunray's lead does. It does have other mechanical interactions that make extortion a powerful addition to Trench's team, however. Can't really comment on that. I don't remember his his kit, and I don't use Newt enough. I understand. I, I know what the extortion is, but I don't use Newt enough. I don't care about Newt, so. Why on earth doesn't he have synergy with B1 Battle Droid? General Grievous is already an excellent home for the B1 Battle Droid. That is actually a pretty solid answer. It would make sense that Trench has some synergy with it, but considering that this is a game and you want to try to build teams, why try? Why take B1 from a Grievous squad? You might as well just leave him where he is. So that's actually a pretty solid answer. Good job, CG, for once in your life. They gain 20% offense for three turns. Stacking limit once per turn. Just to clarify, this is once per overall round. It doesn't charge per each character's turn. So a counterattacking unit would not get 20% from each counterattack if it applied. Once per turn. So if a character were to attack three times in a single turn, they would still only receive 20% offense for three turns. Okay, good answer. When it says the enemy is feared, does that mean they are inflicted with the fear debuff like Darth Revan's? Lowercase, it's not really important, I guess. Correct, feared is the fear debuff like Admiral Piet, Revan, and other characters have. Admiral Piet has fear? I always, <laughs> the only characters I know that inflict fear are Darth Revan and Fallen Bastilla. Admiral Piet? I would never think of him as scary. <laughs> the kit mentioned non-GL Separatist. Is there a Separatist GL on the way? Who is the Separatist tank for the shield tech that is not a Geo or Droid? We don't currently have one? Lots of kit language has built-in future proofing and may or may not have anything to do with our near-term plans. What? Who is the Separatist tank for the shield tech that is not a Geo or Droid. There's a Separatist tank for the shield tech. That is not a Geo or Droid. We don't currently have one. Uh, okay. Are they saying that that was in the wording as well and nobody caught that? I don't know. Skipping that for now. Actually, I say for now, I'm not even going to come back to it. <laughs> with trenches unique, it says health and protection recovery are increased by 50%. For example, with tactical supremacy, that would make the protection recovery 11.5 or 25%. Basically, additive 15% or multiplicative additive. So in this example, the result would be 11.5%. Uh, okay. Previously, Conquest characters not tied to a GL had been lifted to GL strength through their game mode specific Omicrons. Do you expect Trench and his team to be on that level? Trench's Omicrons are designed to raise him to a point where he can challenge some Galactic Legends. Yes, I imagine so because he's got one on his basic. I mean, come on. Whenever another non-droid separatist ally is damaged by an attack, defeated, or evades, Trench has a 50% chance to get 100% turn meter limit once per turn. Is the 50% chance limited once per turn, or the 100% TM gain can only successfully provide once per turn? For example, if a qualifying ally is dam damaged multiple times in a single turn, or an enemy AoE attack hits multiple non-droid allies, does the chance only happen once, or the chance happens as many times as applicable until the effect is triggered once per turn. 
But that is a very wordy question. I don't even know what that says. The entire clause is limited to once per turn. So, if a single character were damaged five times in a single turn, the chance only occurs once. Okay. I see. Can tactical supremacy be dispelled? Yes. The buff has a special condition if it is dispelled as well. Okay, I'm pretty sure it probably even said that, so why would you ask that question? That sounds kind of stupid. Enemies with extortion will be critically hit if able, meaning it won't bypass critical immunity? Correct! This is boilerplate kit language to ensure there is no confusion as to when an automatic crit cannon cannot apply. What? Enemies with extortion will be critically hit if able, meaning it won't bypass critical immunity. Boilerplate kit language. What does that mean? Will this squad beat some Galactic Legends in Territory Wars? Why would you put this question in your list of questions when you basically already answered this earlier? Uh, with Omicron's enabled and the right team, Trench and his team are able to contend with some Galactic Legends while in Territory Wars. Yes, and you basically said that about six questions ago. Yeah, you could contend with some GLs, and now you got stupid. How will this affect Unique One? The first time each enemy loses all protection at the end of that turn, they are feared for one turn, which can't be dispelled if they're resistant. Interact with tunes that lose all protection at the start, i.e. LV teams and Malak. I was going to say Malak because that's the one I'm familiar with. In the effects order, characters like Malak and Lord Vader remove their protection prior to Trench's Unique affecting them. So, Malak and Lord Vader would not be affected by this. Ah, I see. So they're saying that it has to be like an attack and then you lose your protection that way from attacks. Where these guys are just eating their own protection, so they're immune to that. That's actually kind of cool. They literally are immune because they never had protection to begin with. <laughs> <coughs> Ooh. So they can never get fear. That's cool. Will this version of Trench replace the current version in the Lord Vader journey? No. That version will not be changed to reflect this new kit. Well, I don't have Lord Vader. I probably won't for a very long time. But I didn't know about him, uh, Trench, being in the <laughs> storyline for Vader. Now I know he's there because this person gave it away. Kind of a spoiler alert. Anyhow, I think the writing is clear. But just to confirm, it's only the speed that increases with tech extortion, correct? Not the max health, protection, and potency, right? Correct. Only speed is increased. Okay. More of a conquest-related question. We used to have a day to farm characters that are leaving chest rewards af after every three months, but I don't remember having this for either Malgus or Ben Solo. Did I miss these days, or they no longer happen? Proving Grounds runs for 24 hours in the Events tab immediately after the end of every conquest. Is that when it shows up? Huh. I didn't know that. I always thought it was once a month. I didn't know that it was after a conquest. Well, geez, now that makes me want to have conquests more often, just so I can have Proving Grounds more often. <laughs> huh. I didn't know that. I never even put that together. I never paid attention well enough to realize that, that the Proving Grounds showed up after Conquest ended. That never occurred to me. Huh. Although this one said we used to have a day to farm characters that are leaving chest rewards after three months, but I don't remember having this for Malgus or- Oh, I see. Malgus and Ben Sol Yeah, because they haven't made it in there yet. They just added, um, Django last time- Or, Boba Fett signed Django last time. Like, Malgus and Ben Sol aren't in there yet. <laughs> Calm down. They'll get there. Favorite episode with Trench? See, now this is a pointless question. Why would you put this? This is somebody just asking you a dumb question. You don't have to put it in here. Nobody. This isn't going to help anybody know how to use Trench because they hear how one of the CG employees prefers, you know, his initial episode. Cat Mouse is a personal favorite name, favorite name aside. Cat and Mouse? Who answered this? Hmm. I'm not even going to read that. That's a waste of time. Trench has one less ability than other Conquest units. Why is that? We felt a sufficient amount of fun, complexity, and power could be achieved with just the basic and a special ability combined with his passive abilities that trying to add another special ability didn't feel necessary. <clears throat> I didn't realize that he was lacking anything. He still has three Omicrons, so... <laughs> um... 
Um, I didn't see anything that makes Django particularly powerful with the Bactoid Shield Generator. He won't taunt and needs the healing less in the beginning than other tunes, while Dooku could easily benefit from increased survivability and potency. What am I missing? If you're not stealth, and the rest of the team is, then you are the only legal target for most units to attack with or without taunt. Yeah, he won't taunt and he needs the healing less in the beginning than other tunes. Yeah, so what? I forget what that was saying. What is this person talking about right now? What are they answering, actually? If you're not stealth and the rest of the team is, then you're only legal target. Because wasn't that saying that Django would be the target? I mean, Django also comes back to life one, after one time he's killed, you know, because of the Mandalorian thing, so... No other questions. How's your day, meathead? Okay, a couple things. One, here's another stupid one. Why would you include this? Nobody cares. Second off, you should have put this at the very end as a joke, then. But anyways, fuck Meathead and how his day is. I don't particularly like him because he's all about that dumb woke nonsense. Always putting they and stuff instead of, you know, it's a clearly a guy. Like, say they're talking about Mace Windu. Oh, anytime they suffer the buff, they... Like, bro, it's Mace. He's a guy. Put he. Anytime he suffers the buff. None of this they nonsense. Anyways, pretty good. I just had pancakes. Fuck you. <laughs> is it 10 speed or 10% speed? 10%, I know. Crazy, huh? I don't really know what that's talking about, but okay, 10%, cool. This is another character for territory battles? So soon we will see him in platoons or a separate task of the new ri TB Rise of the Empire. The good admiral met his end before the events of Rise of the Empire territory battle, Clone War Season 7. Seven. He will not be retroactively added to existing platoons either. Uh, okay. Why isn't a commander of a Separatist droid army able to fully synergize with Separatist droids? <laughs> I mean, you do have a point there. Trench also worked closely with other Separatist leaders as, we, as seen on screen. While Separatist forces are heavily made up of droids, there are other aspects that make up their full military might. In addition to this, there are balance reasons for the restrictions and the fact that Grievous has a well-established and potent Separatist droid team he already leads. Yes. No need to split up the Separatist droids, other, then you're just going to minimize each one of them, and, and, and almost minimize Grievous. So let him keep the droids and then do something else with the remaining. There's still a lot of Separatists that are kind of useless, so put them under Trench. Boom, now you got two good Separatist teams, the, the droid Grievous team and then the Trench other team. Anyhow... Will we ever get a character with Omicrons for different events, aka one army for territory territory war and one for GAC on different abilities? Okay, first off, a couple things there. One, that would actually be kind of cool. Make them a little more versatile, you know what I mean? Instead of each... Like, I always gotta remember what my Omicrons are for, for each character. Like, is this a, is this a territory war? On? Oh, cool, I gotta use this character then. So that would actually be cool if they did do that, like, one for each. Or if they made it so each Omicron had different, like, abilities per area, you know what I mean, so like, let's say the Qui-Gon one, it does all that cool stuff that it does in Grand Arena, but then maybe in Territory Battles it does something slightly different, something, and then something different in Territory Wars, that way then it's constantly useful, but different, different benefits depending on where you, where you're playing, or, you know, if they wanted to do something like this, this could be kind of cool too, you know, a character that has three Omicrons, instead of all three being just Territory Wars, you know, one is Grand Arena, maybe one for each. One's Grand Arena, one's Territory Wars, and one is, uh, uh, Territory Battles. Then they're always very, you know, uh, very, what's the word I'm looking for? Powerful, useful, versatile. You can put them anywhere and know that, hey, they're getting a boost. But now, the other thing I was thinking is, this is kind of a stupid question to ask here. This is supposed to be about Trench Coat of Arms. Not, um, generic questions like this. <laughs> But anyways, they said, while technically possible, it will lead to three or more different configurations of the character to remember how they work. If we do this, we need to take this into account. Okay, that's really not hard to do. I mean, I'm thinking about how I use SolidWorks all day. I can take one part and change it into multiple parts by using configurations tabs. It ain't that hard to figure out. Swagger stick? Really? This isn't the 2000s memes. Swagger stick is his uh, relic. This is the official canon term for his relic. 
And that's exactly what I figured. I didn't think CG was trying to be funny with that one. I was pretty sure that that's exactly what it was called, was a swagger stick. So this person's kind of dumb. I don't even know Trench Coat of Arms and knew that that was probably what it was canonically called. And this person's over here trying to call CG out like, bro, you're the idiot. <laughs> Anyway, that's all we got. So yeah, at least this one is a little bit more productive than the Zori one. The Zori one was so dumb. Um, of course, there were quite a few dumb questions in here as well. Some are just statements, but it's better than uh, the Zori one. The Zori one was such a waste of time. So yeah, thanks for checking this out with me. And I hope you already know, per usual, uh, until next time, I said see ya.